So what's AI gravity? It's picking on-prem versus public cloud platforms to run your AI. Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to AI Insights and Innovation, where we talk about the truth of AI and how to make it work for your enterprise. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, b geek, and analyst with The Cube Research. Let's get started. So this is a topic we hear quite a bit, uh, and it's really whether we should run our new generative AI systems on-prem uh, within our own private data centers, or we should run them in a public cloud provider, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, or MicroCloud even, which is uh, we talked about here on this show before. Uh, check that out if you have some time. And it really becomes kind of a core decision that enterprises are making these days, where it's very important that we kind of discuss the pros and the cons of each of these decisions. So I call it AI gravity. In other words, AI gravity as, it, as it's being pulled toward on-prem systems, your own private data center, or as it's being pulled toward public cloud providers. And there seems to be a lot of things to consider in that kind of decisions. And also the importance of this decision can't be underestimated. In other words, we make the wrong call here. It's gonna be very difficult once these systems are localized on prem or in the cloud to move them from one platform to the other. Massive amounts of data, huge, epically huge uh, knowledge models, LLMs that we're building on these systems. And it's not going to be as portable, you know, as say just an application that's bound to a database. So we could be committing many millions of dollars and taking huge amounts, amounts of business risk. And so we do need to stop and kind of consider uh, the good and bad aspects of each decisions and even maybe making a hybrid decision where we're going to move some things into the public cloud providers and some things on-prem and the reasons for doing that. Or even a uh, third decision, uh, lo mo looking at a managed service provider or a co-location provider or uh, even one of the micro clouds out there uh, where they're providing GPUs as a service. And we talked about those and check out those shows if you want to get a uh, education on the cheaper ways to do AI in the cloud and kind of the uh, solutions out there now that you're able to leverage. So the reality is that uh, we're getting some investment in the AI space now in 2024, and it's going to accelerate in 2025. Uh, according to Dave Linty, uh, who works with me at the Cube, uh, data from enterprise customers is clear but conflicted. Why 94% of customers say they're spending more on artificial intelligence this year, they're doing so with budget constraints that will steal from their initiative. So, what Dave's saying is absolutely true. In other words, everybody is spending as much as they can on AI, but obviously, IT organizations don't have unlimited funds. Uh, that they can dedicate toward this. And so they're going to be limited by the budgets that they need to leverage. And so there's going to be some economy that is thought around this. This is not going to be throwing millions and millions of dollars uh, into uh, GPU processing and occurs in the cloud or occurs on-prem. This is about making some of the right decisions. And so we kind of have to consider the fact that, you know, where it was two years ago, everybody's looking, and we talked about this in the show before, I'm going to build ChatGPT for banking and ChatGPT for hospital systems. This is about finding the business cases and figuring, figuring out the appropriate architectures and the platform decisions that are going to give us the best bang for the buck. So we're looking at driving this to a strategy, and this is going to be a strategy that we're probably going to, where we're making core decisions this year and next year, they're going to really affect uh, the future of the company. you got to remember that AI stuff can be an innovative differentiator. In other words, something that can set the company aside because we're able to leverage this technology, in this case generative AI, as a true force multiplier that's able to take our business to another level. And if we don't do it, our competitors will. However, we can also make core mistakes uh, in picking the wrong technologies and the wrong platforms that could end up killing our business. And, and it's really that much at stake in looking at these decisions. So, of course, the first issue is the technology. Some of the major issues surrounding the technology include performance and speed. Uh, obviously, in moving into cloud, there's some latency um, uh, data transfer issues versus 
you know, on-prem resource access, access. So in other words, on-prem systems are in your private data center, which could be across the street or across the hall, or I guess some cases across the country, but they're assets that you're able to control. You're able to put big pipes between the systems that use data in those data centers, for example, AI training models, things like that. And therefore, latency is going to be less of a concern than if you're leveraging a public cloud provider, which is typically using the open internet. Of course, there's op there's options with public cloud providers to run your own circuits and you know get higher bandwidth uh, between the cloud providers and yourself, but that costs additional money. So these kind of issues are coming up. Also, the complexity of the AI models, the increased resource demands for some of these LLMs is getting to a point where they're just eating processor time like crazy. Huge amounts of power, huge amounts of processor time. Uh, both GPU and CPUs go into running these things. And it's to a point where we're going to have to make some core decisions because we're going to run out of power that's being generated in the entire world. We're just not going to have the power available that's going to be able to run all these systems. And so I have to figure out some sort of a fallback strategy in either building better technology that's going to provide much more efficiency or don't build the systems until we're able to afford them and able to power them. But this is what's in front of the enterprises these days. If you look for the demand for what they want their AI systems to do, it's probably five to 10 times that in terms of the capacity that they're actually able to afford and actually able to use. So in other words, they're thinking here, their budgets and the amount of technology and power they're able to access is about here. So even if you have the money to spend, you may not be able to access everything you need just because of limitations and their ability to provide them and provide them at scale. And obviously we had GPU shortages and you know other things that are going on that impacts all that. So you have to be a little bit more pragmatic in what you think you need versus what you actually need and what you actually can afford and also what can actually be provided. And it's funny that we're making those decisions now in 2025. We kind of thought that computing was completely commoditized you know, 10, 15 years ago, that doesn't seem to be the case in terms of AI. This, these things are just massively uh, storage and processor hungry, and they're going to be extremely expensive to run, and they're going to eat a great amount of power. So we're going to have to make some core decisions around that. Uh, also, sustainability and, you know, greenhouse gases and all those things come into play as well. So this is what the enterprises are wrestling with right now. So other technology Things to consider would be security concerns, uh, risk around IP leakage and compliance. We're going to put a lot of stuff in those knowledge models, a lot of data uh, that is accessible as well as AI and IP-based uh, systems. And in many cases, enterprises are going to exist on those things uh, existing on premises uh, versus putting them in the cloud. Uh, now, um, if you've listened to my stuff over the years, you don't necessarily give up security when you move stuff into the cloud. In fact, in many instances, you're going to have better security because the security systems in the cloud are much more well thought out. There's much more investment that went into that side of the market. But there is a case to be made for people who want to deal and own their data, and they want to know where it's located. Data sovereignty issues, things like that, compliance that occurs in Europe, where if the data moves out of the country for any reason, do it by mistake or do it on purpose, uh, you can get in a large amount of trouble. Infrastructure requirements, uh, necessity for advanced hardware and efficiency, AI training inference, and really trying to figure out what you need. Uh, so it's what you want versus what you need and versus what can be supplied. And so this becomes kind of the core uh, thing that really kind of defines the problem. It's not uh, looking at everything we want our AI systems to do. Hopefully we have some good use cases in mind by the time we look at the requirements for the existing infrastructure, but it's trying to build strategic platforms that are gonna carry us forward uh, for the next 10 to 15 years. And that's what's, that's what's at stake here. So, of course, there's some cost considerations, uh, and that's kind of core to making a lot of these decisions. So you have initial investment versus ongoing cost when you look at on-prem versus cloud computing. Obviously, in, uh, uh, On-prem, you're buying hardware, you have a data center space, things like that, and uh, the and cloud computing is more operationally focused. In other words, they're going to bill you very much like a utility, like your water bill or your electronic, electric bill. So we all know that. 
So the startup costs for on-prem startups versus the flexibility of the whole pay-as-you-go model. And again, there may be some reasons to move to cloud just for that reason. If companies just don't have the capital to afford to uh, buy a data center, rent a data center, and certainly own the hardware, even lease the hardware, then cloud computing may be their only option. Even if longer term, it's going to cost them more money. But they need to have that capital available for other purposes. Total cost of ownership, comparison of long-term operational costs, including maintenance of power, both solutions on-prem and cloud, and of course the hidden costs of cloud computing. Lots of junk fees in cloud computing, egress fees, fluctuating operational costs, public cloud deployments. You know, as I write about in my insider uh, guide to, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing, um, enterprises out there are paying about 2.5 times what they thought they were going to pay uh, for the cloud resources they're burning now. They just didn't understand those fees. They didn't understand the costs, and they really didn't comprehend what they would be consuming. And those are with more traditional systems. AI is nowhere near those things. So when you get into AI, again, you're getting to more advanced and more intensive processors, very H HPC you know, kind of performance are needed from these things, high performance computing. And that's going to probably be additional costs than many of the enterprises didn't understand were going to be there at the end of the day. So in many cases, they may do their cost analysis uh, and not necessarily understand the all-in cost of putting things in the cloud, consider it to be the cheaper option uh, based on the back of the napkin calculations. And then three or four years down the road, they realize it's not. And we saw that many times, uh, probably 90% of the time, in cloud computing over the last 15 years. People migrated to cloud to find this value, and the value just wasn't there. The cloud was much more expensive than some of the on-prem alternatives. And so there's reasons to strategically move to the cloud. There's some operational benefits, some strategic benefits, some agility benefits that you get from going there. And you can certainly define business value that's associated with those. But if you're just looking at a cost per, uh, cost to cost comparison between on-prem systems and the cloud, the cloud is typically going to be more expensive most of the time. Another thing to consider is kind of the pragmatic um, ability to build uh, AI systems on the cloud versus on-prem and kind of comparing the two. As I mentioned before, Cloud computing is going to be the path of least resistance for AI. They're going to give you the ecosystem, which is going to be on demand, AWS Bedrock, for example, uh, where they're going to provide you with the training infrastructure, uh, the bias monitoring infrastructure, the storage infrastructure, and the ability to get things moving very quickly in building your first generative AI system or your first AI system, or perhaps even moving from traditional machine learning uh, into machine learning with generative AI. And everything's there. You just press a button and it comes down, it configures the ecosystem for you and you start building systems. Where on-prem, it's a DIY thing. You, you have to build, deploy, get the technology in place, get the infrastructure in place, get the storage in place, get the training in place, get the operations in place, and you have to take care of it. Now, there are options there. You know, People like HPE provide AI private clouds where they give you the ecosystem, very much like the public cloud providers give you the ecosystem that they're able to provide, the way they define it. And you very much get the same thing with some private cloud offerings as well. So therefore, you can use your own hardware or even the hardware of providers, of uh, vend hardware vendors such as Dell and HPE and IBM, uh, and they will give you a turnkey system to get your AI, AI systems up and running. And that's a viable alternative because you kind of get the best of both worlds sometimes. You get the best of having a turnkey ecosystem to get your AI uh, going, uh, but you also get some of the lower costs you're able to enjoy in leveraging an on-prem system that you have to buy, own, host, operate, which is the downside of it. But all things considered, normally that's going to be a less expensive approach than the public cloud providers, again, generally speaking. Your, your mileage is going to vary. Your ability to uh, look at this uh, in terms of pragmatic terms as to what's more important to you, uh, that's going to be very much domain dependent. So we have to consider, uh, you know, enterprise, um, you know, considerations that enterprises care about, data sensitivity, compliance needs, how regulations affect deployment choices. In other words, in dealing with on-prem versus the cloud and dealing with regulatory pressures there. There's lots of them in healthcare and banking industries. Uh, other countries and different have different roles and functionality. Organizational control and customization, the need for tailored solutions and direct control over the infrastructure. That's gonna vary from enterprise to enterprise. Some of the smaller enterprises may have to go directly to cloud again because they can't afford 
uh, to own or even lease their own data centers and invest in hardware that's capital they want to put into the business. But again, all things being equal, the on-prem solutions are typically going to be cheaper. And you have to consider other situations, like if you want complete customization and control. You can't go into a cloud provider and start hacking their kernels uh, and, and hacking their multi-tenant systems. They're just not going to allow that. They're, they're a utility service. They have to, you're dealing with them through a layer of abstraction, where if you own the hardware, you can do anything you want to do with it as, as you damn well please, which is a, some kinds of, sometimes a, a option that enterprises need. And also hybrid approaches, as I mentioned earlier, uh, where we're looking at each use case, we're looking at each application, AI application that we're building, and then taking it on a case-by-case basis as to whether or not that should be in the cloud or whether or not it should be on-prem. Um, the only downside of doing that is you're going to end up supporting two different platforms, which I think is fine. I think most organizations are heading there anyway. So you're going to have to have a certain amount of talent and skill sets that are able to support the cloud providers, and normally it's cloud providers, plural, multi-cloud deployments, as well as your on-prem systems, plural, uh, because you're going to have different systems with different configurations to support, support different AI models. So you're going to end up with lots of heterogeneity, lots of different platforms, operating systems, databases, AI tool sets, um, processors, probably a mix of GPUs and CPUs, uh, and certainly trying to keep up with the technology refresh moving forward. So you're going to get the best of both worlds, but the cost of that is going to be increased heterogeneity, which is going to increase complexity, which is going to increase cost. So that's the downside of doing that. So where's this all going? Well, um, the AI stuff is obviously going to focus more on the strategic use of the technology. I'm a big advocate for the fact that I don't think we're going to be building LLMs uh, at the enterprise level. Just can't afford it, and there's no reason to do it. Uh, There's not a good use case that the businesses are going to find. So we're going to build more small language models, agentic AI, more tactical deployments of AI. And I think that's where the future is going to come from. Good news is that's going to take a bit of the pressure off of the infrastructure folks to uh, use things that are a bit more reasonable. Uh, So uh, using cloud-based systems, they don't necessarily have to leverage uh, GPUs and even some of the on-prem systems. So I think things are going to be a little bit more scaled back than we initially thought, I hope. Uh, But when you do talk to the big enterprises out there, they're still gung-ho in building huge AI systems uh, and getting these things up and running. And basically, they're looking to build LLMs. Uh, Whether that's a mistake or not, it's kind of up to them as the enterprise. There may be a good strategic reason for doing that. In many of the cases that I hear, it's just not there. So they're going to spend $100,000 to build something that probably somebody else can build at scale and provide it to 100 different companies where they're just trying to build it for their company. There may be a good reason to do that, such as a innovative differentiator that they want to own. And that's all well and good. But the amount of money that needs to be spent, the amount of power that needs to be consumed to build these things uh, is going to be, I think, way more out of the resource resources of many of the enterprises out there, certainly the Global 2000. And we have to look at the emerging technology out there. Um, you know, where's AI going to go? In other words, what's going to be what, what's important now is not what, what, what's important in the AI space a couple of years ago. This thing, this stuff seems to be moving about twice, perhaps three times the speed as cloud innovations, and it's just going to keep moving. That's probably going to accelerate before it slows down. So the technology in the next few years is going to be very different. And so what are the process needs are going to be? How can we predict what that usage is going to be? Or how can we protect ourselves, probably more important, in making decisions uh, where we can provide agile decisions, we're able to adapt them around new innovations and the way in which the market's going to emerge. That's extremely important as well. So we're it's not just making a decision as to what we need now, but what we think we're going to need next year, the year after that, and the year after that. Uh, and if we move towards some sort of proprietary framework, uh, we invest uh, in a single vendor solution, things like that. We may find ourselves in the next couple of years uh, invested or locked into a particular vendor that does has doesn't isn't able to move as fast as we need them to move with the emerging and new technology space that's occurring in the AI era, AI world. And if that's the case you're going to have to spend a lot of money to decouple from that provider and then move your uh, stuff over to something else. And if you've ever done that, that's something that's going to be very difficult, very expensive. You're decoupling from the proprietary interfaces, APIs, capabilities, platforms of a particular vendor, for example, a cloud vendor, 
and then moving it to another provider or several providers and then having to recouple in those providers. And that's not something you want to be uh, wasting a lot of money and time on. So what's important here? I think what's important here is that the enterprises out there be, come to terms with their own requirements. I, I don't see a lot of decisions being made based on the business requirements and the business directions that the business is moving in. So I see a lot of decisions being made you know, almost on emotional levels where uh, we're getting into the excitement and the hype behind the technology and the potential this technology is able to bring. And obviously AI is incredibly exciting uh, when you get to the end state as to what this stuff can do to us, even changing our personal lives now. It's changed now in terms of our ability to consume information in different, more useful ways. And it's going to make ultimately our life better. It's going to automate lots of uh, things out there that are manual now. And so I get the excitement. Um, the concern would be is that we make bad decisions around the excitement. So in other words, we invest too quickly in a particular direction, uh, make a, a decision that we may come to re regret. So, so for example, going to the all employees meeting, announcing that we're cloud only and that's all we're going to do, or we're all on-prem only and that's all we're going to do. That's almost never a good idea. Uh, you're always going to have to have fallback positions, and it's never going to be one particular platform, one particular approach that's going to solve all, all the problems out there. So it is going to be it depends kind of thing. But we need to know about the requirements of our business before we consider how we're going to make the strategic decision. So do the time, do the homework, understand your data, understand the complexity of your systems, understand the business processes that are there, You know what the needs are, what you're doing well, what you need to do better, uh, what technical debt has to be eliminated. That's a big one where your data is extremely important with AI and how you're going to consume it and put it into uh, uh, data quality training. Sometimes the data is in very bad shape and you're going to spend a lot of money and time, even the first couple of years, just kind of fixing your data before you get AI involved. And that's going to really kind of dictate how you're making a lot of the decisions here. And so it's, uh, I, I guess the, um, I'm guessing the Disney could buzzkill in saying that this isn't move about moving into AI. This is about understanding yourself first and then figuring out the appropriate strategies uh, to move the technology. And this is going to be important. I think this is going to be one of those technological decisions. Uh, it's more important than cloud computing. You know, the ability to kind of move into cloud is more important to even choosing automation, choosing mainframe systems that we did 30 years ago. You know, this is about building systems that are going to ultimately be able to find how your business works, uh, automated supply chain, the ability to provide better customer experiences, even the ability for the generative AI system or the AI system to be the product that you're selling and something that's going to define how people perceive your business. And that's nothing uh, short of it being your business. So you're making core decisions in terms of how you're going to automate things that are unautomated now and how you're going to put knowledge engines in place uh, where things that are manual now and specifically how you're going to disrupt your particular industry, whether it's pharma pharmaceuticals, whether it's uh, healthcare, whether it's finance, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's retail, to do much better and provide innovative differentiators more so than your competitors. And that's, what it's, that's what it's all about. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, check out my other videos here and check out the videos of my colleagues and check out the content here at the Silicon Angle. Also, check us out at The Keep Research. Look us up uh, if you're looking to get some help and how to make technology work for your enterprise. It's very important. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers.